and welcome back to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And another edition of the Boys of Eleven Twelve, and we're looking at Julian Lescott today. So, uh, hope you enjoy this. It's two parts. This is part one that takes us up to about Christmas time, twenty eleven, I think. Yes, twenty eleven. Uh, if I got that wrong, I'll let you know as we get to it. But uh, yeah, so that's part one, and part two will take us from. Uh, January 2012 to, to him finishing his career at City. So let's talk about Jolian Patrick Lescott, born the 16th of August 1982. He's a spring chicken, born in Birmingham, grew up in the Quinton area of the city. Uh, of course, uh, with his, his scar on his head is very familiar, isn't it? That was from when he was five years old. He was struck by a car outside his primary school, suffering severe head, head injuries, leaving scarring on his forehead and hairline. He was a graduate of Wolverhampton Wanderers Youth Academy. He made his first team debut with Wolves in the year 2000 at just 17 years old and moved to Premier League club Everton, of course, where we had lots of fun, didn't we, getting him from there, for a total of £5 million in August 2006. At one stage, strange to think that uh, he did have a few injury problems at City. Perhaps not the year last year or two, but he hardly ever, you know, he, his his actual appearances were fairly small uh, compared to his substitute appearances. Uh, so it's hard to think. But with his injury problems later at City, um, he had a year out with the Cruciates at Wolves, and then he went on to play 129 consecutive games for Everton at one stage before manager Moyes gave him a rest. So. I have to think he managed that many games, but hey, that's how it is. Following the end of the 2008-2009 two, season, City attempted to sign Lescott, but Everton, yes, publicly rejected two offers. And on August 11th, 2009, he submitted a formal written transfer request to try and force it through which again was immediately rejected by Everton. He turned out in the very first game of the season for Everton, although he, obviously Moyes was advised perhaps not to. But uh, yeah, the reaction from Evertonians was a little bit mixed, to say the least. It wasn't uh, wholeheartedly for or whole wholeheartedly against, as his name was announced on the PA system. And he finally, finally got his move to City on the 25th of August 2009 for a reported £22 million. He said of his move, yeah, I was just quoting from his uh, one of his first interviews he did for the City magazine. He said of his move, it was a crazy time for me, he admits. I couldn't couldn't believe anybody wanted to pay that much money for me. But I was happy too. I thought it was a bit mad that a club who could attract any player in the world wanted me. Moving to City was one of the best days of my life because it was something I wanted. It wasn't about the money. I remember hearing that one of the, co one of the coaches at Everton had said that about me and I thought, how can you say that when you know me as well as you do? Believe me, I had a great contract at Everton. I didn't need any more, but City represented a chance to achieve real success faster than it was going to happen at Everton. People talk about David Moyes maybe one day going to United, and that's fine. Huh? It's psychic uh, because the managers can afford to wait, but as a player, you don't have that luxury, and I felt like I couldn't wait. That city, it's just brilliant the way the dressing room has gelled. I think it's the sheer sense of excitement among all the lads, this feeling that we can achieve things, and not just in the future, but straight away. You can sense the excitement amongst the fans too. They're enjoying watching players like Tevez and Emmanuel Adebayor as much as I enjoy playing and training with them. So, yeah, he was looking forward to it. As I say, money wasn't the be-all and end-all, uh, no matter what other fans said. Mark Hughes said of his signing at the time, I fully expect him to become one of the best central defenders in the country. He can be as good as John Terry or Rio Ferdinand. There you go, high exaltation. And so on to the season 9-10. He did join it a little bit late, but he didn't miss too many games. He made his debut for City on the 27th of August in a 2-0 League Cup away victory over Crystal Palace. He, and at the time, Colo Torre, struck up a new central defensive partnership, although a certain Vincent Company would also have his say that season as he began to sort of uh, grind away and get a position in the team as well. He scored his first City goal in a 2-2 draw with Fulham on the 25th of October 2009. Yeah, a screamer from about 12 inches, I think it was. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but he had to put it in the goal. Uh, we've seen players miss from that close in. Well, perhaps not too many. And he followed up the game after that with a powerful headed goal against Scunthorpe. Look at all Scunny in the fourth round of the Carling Cup at the City of Manchester Stadium. I don't think it was called the Etihad then. 
couple of, well, three quirky facts about Joel in his favourite holiday spot at this point in time, 29.10, was uh, New York. His favourite film was The Goonies. He's not alone there. And his favourite food, yeah, Caribbean, or Caribbean, however you, however you pronounce it. After 17 continuous starting 11 appearances, disaster, yes, he re-injured his knee after hyperextending it in a 3-3 away draw with Bolton Wanderers on the 12th of December. Within a week of that, yeah, nothing to do with his knee, of course, but City had a new manager, Roberto Mancini, joined. But sideline Lescott wouldn't get back into the frame or even, even an option of getting back into the frame until the 9th of February 2010. Ironically, against Bolton, yeah, I got right, against Bolton again. He was a 55th-minute substitute for Colo Torre. He then partnered both Colo and an improving company who was making his uh, making his presence felt, but once again find himself frustrated after picking up an Achilles problem, which would see him struggle to get back in the team in his preferred central defensive role for the rest of the season. His last start being sunned underway on March the 14th for 1 1 draw. So his 9 10 stats in a bit of a start stop season. Played 18, made 18 league appearances, won a substitute and scored one goal. And in the Cups, he played six, no sub appearances and scored one goal. So on to season 10 11, he made his European bow, in, not, in the, not in the Champions League, but that other thing we played in Europa League, whatever it was, in the first leg against FC Timisora. Play, playoff match at that uh, on the 19th of August in a 1 0 win. Although he was struggling for game time, he was spending a lot of time on the bench and sometimes not even in the match day squad. The squad was getting quite big at the time and as long as everyone was fit, he couldn't please everybody. During the January 2011 transfer window, with Lescott making, again, few first-team appearances, was speculation that it would be moving back to Wolverhampton Wanderers, uh, Mancini loaning back. However, continually, uh, however, Robert Roberto Mancini continually insisted that Lescott was definitely part of his plans, and he probably proved that as well. He would get his first goal of the season on Boxing Day in a four 0 win over Aston Villa. Another header. And things were improving for him as far as starts were concerned. He was already back in Mancini's mindset. He'd already said that, hadn't he? So it was revealed that Colo Torre, yes, uh, was going to uh, be in a bit of trouble. He'd failed a drug test and was suspended. The anti-doping agency, World Anti-Doping Agency, had imposed a six-month suspension from football, effective from the 2nd of March 2011. And that allowed Jolian uh, to become an ever-present in the team till the end of the season. So it all worked out well and he did a good job. On the 17th of April 2011, he started and played the full 90 minutes against United in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. Uh, City reached out as we reached our first major final since 1981. And Lescott was part of the City team that won the FA Cup, that brought it back Yeah, but after all those years, eh, beating Stoke 1-0 in the final at Wembley. He said, after this game, I'm emotionally finished, wrecked. It has been an overwhelming day. Look at what it means to all the fans. I feel blessed. Many questions have been asked about why these players come to City, but this is the reason to win trophies. I've grown up watching the FA Cup, and so to win it here at Wembley is just amazing. In a vital game against Spurs on May the 10th, under pressure from Lescott. Yeah, Mr Crouch, you remember the season before he did the dirty on us, didn't you? But uh, Mr Crouch, under pressure because Lescott, Lescott was on his shoulder, turned the ball into his own net for the only goal of the game. And he also scored a couple more headers in the final two matches of the season. A 3-0 win against Stoke City and three days later against Bolton Wanderers in a 2-0 win. As City ended the season in third and qualified for the UEFA Champions League for the first time in in its brand new format. Anyway, we did we had qualified a, a, a little while before that, haven't we? But we won't talk. We'll brush over that. Over to King of the Kipax issue one eight nine. Yeah, for Burfield's class of twenty eleven review. He calls uh, Jolene Lescott just just Jolo, not Jolo. Jolo. He goes on to say, improved as the season went on with a series of increasingly impressive performances to the point that I can now attend games without the half hundred weight of toilet roll that I have used to have to automatically reach for every time he touched the ball. However, though, J-Lo is now going some way towards justifying his price tag. I do still worry that his tendency to get caught napping in possession 
will be horribly punished in the Chimps League. I used to go to Chimps League as well. I, mean, I don't know if you did it before you, John, but there you go. So, yeah, so an okay review, not not sparkling. So his 10-11 stats, season 10-11 stats, he made 20 starts in the league, two as sub and scored three goals. And he made 15 starts in the Cups, none as sub and no goals. So on to season 11 and 12. That's the name of that's the title. That's the title of the piece, isn't it? The boys of 11 12. Let's have a look. Season 11 12 on the 7th of August. He got off to an okay start, although City didn't. He and this 2011 FA Community Shield at Wembley. We were, we were batching them, weren't we? We were batching United. He put he opened the scoring. Uh, made it to you know we made it two nil at half time. United couldn't cope, and then they all they bounced back and beat us three two, didn't they? So at least he's got on the score sheet in that game, and company. And Lescott started where they finished off last season as the main go-to at the centre of defence. Lescott also made his Champions League debut against Napoli. Yeah, I've still got me clapper somewhere for that one in September. And the City went toe-to-toe with United at the top of the table. He celebrated just like the rest of us as, as, uh, on the pitch, off the pitch everywhere and played a key role, of course, in the famous 6-1 at the Swamp on the 23rd of October. Lescott scored his only goal for City in a one one sorry, his only goal for City, his only own goal for City in a one one draw with Liverpool at Anfield. This was after a tiring trip to Napoli in midweek. So we'll, we'll forgive him for that. But please join me in part two. As Lescott becomes a key player on the running, of course, for this 11 12 title. And uh, so join me for that in part two. We enjoyed that. Let me know any memories you've got, guys, so far. It'd be great to hear from you. So join me for part two. Thanks for watching, please. Until we meet again, and that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.